are back with the Dr. Joe Show with world famous thriller author John Land. John, question: Young writer, what are your what, what's your advice to a young writer who wants to? I, I you you know I used to say simply tell a great story, beginning beginning, middle, and end. Now I say have fun. Yeah. telling a great story because if you're having fun writing that reader is go is much more likely to have fun reading it remember you are the first person to read what you write you're the first audience for what you do i mean i'm amazed by people who 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 don't like their own work i'm my own biggest fan <laughs> you know it's like in my mind i should be the number one a number one new york times best selling author and part of that is ego sure but the other part of it is I love what I do, and if I didn't love what I was doing, why would I be doing it? Mm. Why would I be writing these books if I didn't genuinely love love what I love the product, love the finished product? Um, so I think you have to do that. I all, I'm always, always all I always when I talk about story, I'm always reminded of the great John D. McDonald who created tra created Travis McGee, a great novelist as well as a great thriller writer, mystery writer. Um, and a young writer, he, young writers would show up at his house in Longboat Key on the water all the time. And they'd show up in the afternoon. He would be drinking by then. Um, he wrote in the morning. And they would just sit out on his deck and talk about writing. And one day, one young writer said to, to him, Mr. McDonald, you always talk about writing a great story. What's a great story? And John D. McDonald looked up from his drink and said, stuff happens to people you care about. Hmm. So always remember that a lot of writers put a lot of stuff in their books but not necessarily with people that we care about. Other writers can can st strive to create characters we we care about, but nothing happens to them. They're never in any jeopardy. They're not in any quest that defines them. You need both. Story is stuff happening to people we care about. Mm -hmm. So if, if somebody wants to start one of the 50 plus books that you've written, where should they start? Which is uh, the first one you think uh, they should read? You know, that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, I, I you would usually say, you know, writers should continue to improve. So I, I, I think starting with, with, a, with a more recent one um, is always a good idea. They could start in the Caitlin Strong series with Strong Enough to Strong from the Heart. Or they could start with the first in a series I'm doing, uh, the Capital Crime series that I've taken over. Uh, Margaret Truman's Capital Crime series, they could start with Murder on the Metro. That's, the, that's my beginning, even though it's the 31st book in the series. Um, on the other hand, I, although I say that, I think people who, in, it, you know, I, I've never read a series in order. I've always come in in the middle and then gone back and gone forward. Wow. That's true. Of, so, you know, I, I don't think, I, I'm trying to think. I mean, I started the Jack Reacher series around book six or seven, so I had five to go back to. Same thing with Robert Parker Spencer. Same thing with, um, you know, the only series I read in order was the James Bond series, the, the, the Ian Fleming books, and I learned a lot from doing that. Um, so the point I'm getting at is, the safest thing to do would be find a series like my female Texas Ranger, Caitlin Strong, and start at the beginning. Read them in order, because that, you see, when I grew up write, reading, it was harder to do, because books were out of print. You fell in love with an author, and then you couldn't get any more books, because the, the books weren't on the stores anymore. Mm. Well, now nothing goes out of print anymore. Uh, you know, either at your local bookstore or, or your local chain bookstore or on Amazon, you can get anything, especially if you're a digital reader. Not all my books are available in print anymore, but every one of my books is available digitally. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd start, I think the safest place to start is at the beginning of a series like the Caitlin Strong series, with strong enough to die and then you you witness firsthand the evolution of the characters you watch how they grow you watch how they change you watch how they evolve um and that that's a lot of fun when you do it uh, you know that reading them in order um so that's that's another possibility either at the very end and then go back to the beginning or 
um, you know, start start with Strong Enough to Die for the Caitlin Strong books. And, and are they in audio, audio books as well? Absolutely. I think um, they're all in audio. The Caitlin Strong books are done by a company called Graphic Audio, so they're done on Amazon because they're fully staged productions. Mm. There's music, there's gunshots, there's wow. explosions. So they're not a typical just somebody reading a book. They're performing the book. It's almost like an old-time radio show, which I love because I was such, you know, I became, uh, you know, upset, uh, addicted to old-time radio shows when I was in high school just because the storytelling reminded me of the old days. Uh, imagine William Conrad playing Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke. Nobody knew what he looked like. Nobody knew he was 400 pounds mm -hmm. in those days. You know, he could never have played Matt Dillon in the TV show. Um, once people saw what he looked like, but yeah, so you could so everything I've done is available in audio in one form or another. That's fantastic. And how do people get it? You, you, you mentioned a few places, but really they just they just go to Amazon. I'm going to be honest with you, and this is the realities of the business today. Um, bookstores aren't are you know bookstores have survived by selling more than just books, and they've survived. Um, by not keeping as many books in stock as they used to. So, you know, I send people to Amazon because I know they can get everything I've ever written on Amazon. And, you know, the new book you can get anywhere you want. But the older stuff, go to Amazon. Because mm -hmm. they've got it all. And you can look at the ratings. Um, you can look at, you know, what, what other people have said about it. Um, you know, you can compare notes with, with, with the virtual audience. Um, so I, I send people to Amazon. I wish I could send them to Borders and Walden's, but right. they're not here anymore. Right. And I miss those mall stores so much. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. My, uh, my career was launched the same way that I discovered most of my favorite authors. Browsing in a bookstore and just finding a book either usually in the front of the store, in the spindle facing out. And that's how I, my career was launched, in paperback only, not hardcover. People would discover me because of where my books were placed and because the covers were shiny, and then they would keep coming back for the next one and the next one and the next one. When the Waldens and the mall stores went away, it killed a lot of the, of, the, of the wonder of the book business, of browsing in a bookstore and finding a new author. That's how I discovered Stephen King, Clive Cussler, Robert Ludlum. You name it, almost every author I read, I discovered browsing. I love Amazon, but you don't browse on Amazon. You go on Amazon because you already know what you're going to buy. And we've lost something with the loss of those mall stores, with the shrinking shelf space in drugstores and train stations and airports. Um, we've lost something. And I understand the realities of business and the importance of square footage. But um, my heyday as a writer, as far as sales goes, was when my paperbacks were face out at every Walden Books in the country, at every mall in the country, B. Dalton's, Laureate's, you, you know, all these paper, these, these mall stores. That's where I, that's what made me. And losing those mall stores has, you know, stuck a dagger in my sales and in, in, you know, in, in the way I'm discovered um, in a way that, that's really hurt. Mm. So, John, we, we've got a, a few minutes left. Um, at the end of the show, we, we ask our, our guests a couple of things. The I am approach, you know, is, has two basic truths. The first mm -hmm. is small changes can have big effects. I think you spoke a little bit with Mark about, about what young authors can do, but any other thoughts? What small change can you suggest to our listeners around your books? Wow. You mean as far as them wanting to write? Yeah, wanting you know, to write. Um, you know, I'm not sure anything you do creatively is small, but as far as small changes, here's the thing, the simplest thing of all. You've got to do it every day. Uh, okay. It's not something you can't look at writing as a hobby and be good at it. Right. You can't look at right because writing comes from passion. It comes from passion to tell your story and enjoy the process and enjoy the finished product. Enjoy every stage of the process. So writing every day. The other is, truth of the I am. You control no one. You influence everyone. You get to choose the kind of influence you want to be. John Land, world-famous author. 
What kind of influence do you want to be? Um, well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I want people from, from as a writer, um, you know, I, I, I want to give, I want to take people out of their world um, for however long they're reading my books and however, whatever's bothering them or plaguing them, when they're reading my book, they're, they're not thinking of, of anything else but what they're experiencing. Um, as, as a person, um, you know, there is a great thing in the movie Harvey, a great line in the movie Harvey with Jimmy, with Jimmy Stewart where he says, um, I won't go through the whole thing, we don't have time, but the, the line is, and when they leave, they always leave impressed. And I think that's what I want to leave people, people I meet and people who read what I write. I want them to be impressed. Hmm. Well, I think you have well achieved that goal uh, probably hundreds of thousands, not millions of times over. So I, I'm very grateful that you've come on the air with us tonight. You have a website as well. Can people go to your website? Yeah, they can go to johnlandbooks.com, J-O-N-L-A-N-D, no H, uh, books.com. I'm don't. I'm, I'm not very good at keeping it up, so you can always uh, go on, like I said, go on Amazon and search me, and you'll get all the latest books. Um, Google me, um, get reviews, um, you know, um, and keep reading. You know, keep reading great stories, whether I wrote them or somebody else did. That's great. And can they, are there actually links to your books on your website, or they still have to go to Amazon? Yeah. There are. Yeah, it, I think it links to Amazon, but it links everywhere else to, um, you know, but I'm, I'm, you know, I have really strong positive reviews, so I take that as a, as, as a, as kind of affirmation That's that great. readers are getting what I'm trying to do. It's great. That they're, they're feeling it. Well, it is thrilling to have you on. I had just had to say that. I couldn't resist it. And thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Folks. My pleasure, Dr. Joe. Next week, before I forget, we're going to be talking with Don Marks about Alzheimer's. Um, I really hope people tune into that. It's going to be fascinating. John Land, you're the best. We'll chat All soon. Right. Okay. Thanks, John. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Stretch the